We work hard as physicians to take care of the health and well-being of our patients. But when it comes to our money, do we have the same condition of care? Probably, probably not. Let's change that together. Welcome to the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast, where we'll fight and advocate for your financial literacy. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. Thanks for being here. Let's jump into the show. This week's episode is sponsored by CityVest. CityVest has quickly become the most popular and best way for doctors to invest in top performing real estate private equity funds that are usually reserved for institutional investors. This unique access to investing in these institutional funds is available for the first time ever through CityVest's easy and secure online investment platform. CityVest does the hard work of conducting due diligence and vetting the investments. They even get a third-party due diligence report that is posted on their website. As a result of aggregating a several million dollar investment amount into their access funds, CityVest gains access to investing in the institutional investment and is able to negotiate better investment terms such as a 12% preferred return. You can check them out at cityvest.com or go to the link in the show notes below. So welcome everybody to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. And I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I talk about four different types of freedom, financial, time, location, emotional freedom. And the podcast started out as um, physician guests and audience, but now it's grown and expanded to include business owners, investors, entrepreneurs, creatives, speakers, coaches. So I've opened it up to the masses so that hopefully everybody can get some value out of the ideas shared today. So today, we're going to talk all about creativity, the art of ideas, unlocking your creative potential. Um, And to help share that, we have um, Robin Landa, and she's actually a author, and she's actually a distinguished professor, which we'll get into later and let her talk about it. So Robin, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here, Dr. Liu. I'm a great admirer of yours. Oh, well, thank you. I know we're connected through PodMatch, and um, we had uh, discussed, and I know your husband is a physician as well. Um, So tell us more about yourself, how you came to be, and we'll go from there. I, as you said, I'm a distinguished professor in the Michael Graves College of Kane University, which is a public university in New Jersey. And um, I I write a lot of books. which is uh, an income stream for me. Although, unlike a lot of your listeners, I give a lot of it away because I fund a lot of scholarships for my students. My students are first-generation college students, so I feel like I have to help them in some way. I I write a lot about, I, I started out writing about design and branding and advertising my field, but now I've I've moved into, like you, a more general audience. And um, my last two books, one just came out last month, is aimed at a marketing audience. And the new one that's coming out in November is aimed at a general audience. Interesting, interesting. And I see, uh, we'll talk about your book later. I see your book in the background um, that all of the audience and listeners can go and find. But um, so what's really interesting is um, this idea of creativity, because this is not something that can be taught. It's something that we all have, but we have to channel it and harness it. And we have to discover it. So, um, and that's been always been a fascination of mine. Um, so, we'll talk. How do gen- people generate worthwhile ideas? I have a, a framework, a new system. There really hasn't been a new system for generating new ideas since 1964. There was <laughs> one that came out in 1926, and then 1964. And people talk about design thinking, which isn't really an idea generation system. But I've come up with a system. You can call it a framework or a system. And there are three Gs. There's goal, gap, and gain. And I think you as a physician and scientist will totally understand the gap. So, (laughs) for example, and you probably will have a much better time explaining it to your audience than I will. For example, mRNA 
that was a gap, right? Mm -hmm. Dr. Carrico and Dr. Weissman found a gap in that technology, in that deliverance, in that medicine. Um, there are gaps in all disciplines, in all fields. So if you have a goal, that goal needs to address a gap. And the gap can be any sort of gap. It can be an, un, an un, underserved audience. It can be um, a question that hasn't been asked. It can be really any any in any field. You have to do some research. And then the the third G is gain, and that's where my framework ends up with worthwhile ideas because the idea has to benefit either individuals, society, companies, creatures, or our planet. Otherwise, there's no point. Uh, if, if the idea doesn't have a benefit, there really is no point. And I really believe in the triple bottom line, in benefiting people, that there's profit, people, and the planet. Yeah, that's really interesting. I love, I've always loved acronyms because it, or just um, how to frame things and how to think about things. So I love that, um, the goal gap and gain. Um, some some of the things is uh, that's, um, that I've always done is uh, I would have a journal and I just write, you know, take a day off and just think of different new ideas or, and that's been helpful for my creativity. What are some ways that to people can use to build their creative habits? Well, one thing is um, to ask what if questions. Now, I don't know if that's one of the things that you do, but that's really one of the very best things that you can do. And it, it's really very easy. Um, if you think about science fiction, right, even about something like Star Trek, you know, what if we could voice command computers, right, which yeah. has come to be? What if we could <laughs> transport people, right? I'm waiting for that just by <laughs> snapping our fingers. So a lot of the what if questions really start to make you think about possibilities that are not in our own experience. And then the next, my next favorite question is if only, uh, yeah. If only we had digital twins of ourselves that could retain all our memories and live beyond us, right? If yeah. only <laughs> I could fly without an airplane, if only, right? So what if and with, if only really allow us to think about possibilities outside of our own experience? So that, those, are, those are really easy questions to ask, and they're fun questions to pose, even within a conversation. And then the other things, and um, this was actually an article I just read recently in the New York Times about helping people uh, with dementia, is about observation, about becoming more observant, um, really noticing things, being mindful observers, that you start to notice things. And comedians are good at that observational humorists are good at that. They notice things, how somebody eats an, a sandwich cookie or how somebody picks something up, right? And it, it's, you start to see things that other people might miss. So observation and being curious, right? You're a scientist as well as a physician. So you really understand the importance of curiosity. Yeah. Right. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's why you're fascinated by curiosity, by creativity, because you are a scientist as well as a physician. That Ph.D. really makes <laughs> a big difference. Right. <laughs> cool. Doc to Doc is a personal lending solution designed by doctors for doctors. We understand that doctors financial situations change faster than an insulin drip in ketoacidosis. And we also understand that doctors are the most reliable borrowers in the world. Through our proprietary algorithm, we're able to provide personal loans at great rates with amazing flexibility because we take into account your schooling, your specialty, and where you are in the medical journey. Doctors come to us after they've matched into residency and we loan for all sorts of personal reasons, from credit card debt consolidation to family expenses and medical bills. We speak with everyone who applies for a loan and offer fixed interest rates and flexible term options without prepayment penalties. If you're a physician looking for a personal loan, fill out our application form now. It only takes three minutes and we'll get back to you with a decision within 24 hours. I've always found that 
the medical side is you're just trained to um, di- uh, take a set of symptoms and and uh, make it to a diagnosis and then treat it. That's sort of the whole crux of medicine. But you know, science science wise, you know, you're it's all about discovery and uh, it's all about intellectual creativity and curiosity, which are two different fields. So, um, which is, uh, you know, I, I always find myself, cause it's quite interesting. I always think about what's frustrating and I'm like thinking, okay, what if, or if only, what if we didn't need the airlines or what if you didn't need the banks, you know, if only, you know, so that's, uh, the, these are all great, um, suggestions so but but that's probably what led you to this podcast and this financial freedom too because you're so creative i mean i i bet you that all that that training in science led you to this as well i mean that you're really a creative thinker yeah yeah i always always and um i'm always thinking um in terms of um i'm always observing what's going on what, how are things changing where are things going to be in the next 20 years um, you know, you know, are we going to need to go to school and, you know, all of these different types of um, trends, you know, so um, what's what's interesting is you talk about strategic creativity. Tell us more about that and what is the value? Well, creativity, some people are afraid in, in, in the business world, some people are afraid of creativity because it kind of seems freewheeling, you know, like fine artists, musicians, they're they're creative and that's kind of out there right but in in advertising and in graphic design um, we are strategic creatives we have to actually get a problem solved and so it has to be directed creativity and so we have to as i said solve a problem we have to anticipate as you said anticipate issues we have to be empathetic because if we don't understand the people that we're aiming at it's not going to resonate. Yeah. Uh, empathy is very, very important as it is for physicians to be empathetic with their patients. We have to appropriately aim at our target audience. And this is where my other idea about a game comes in is that ultimately whatever you create has to benefit people because people, whether it's branding or advertising or anything will ultimately say, well, what's in it for me? Because the human drive is, whether it's intrinsic or extrinsic, right? We want something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's either the carrot or the stick, which they talk about. Um, and uh, I know a lot of listeners, they're listening to this. You know, you've given a lot of value. How, how does someone actually unlock their creative potential? How, do, how does they, they've been, let's say they were in the corporate world and they sort of just you know, followed all the rules, but then they were really curious and they want to unlock their potential. How can they do that? It's always good to ask challenging questions, almost heretical questions or dissenting questions, because if you do, if you, if you, all right, let, let's put it this way. If you say, let's do what we've always done, you're not going to get very far, right? Um, if you say, what would be the wrong answer rather than the right answer? You can immediately figure out what you shouldn't be doing, and maybe that'll bring you to what you should be doing. That's one thing. But if you ask yourself challenging questions, you may really bring up issues that you hadn't thought of. And what I find is that a lot of people would rather be safe and and rather than think about what might um, be edgy or or or, or um, put them out there, but people don't, you know, copycat, same old, nobody cares. It really, you have to really move out there to get people to notice anything anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um, it's like, you have to sort of just break the boundaries and start in- inquiring and just open your mind and broaden your perspective. Um, what was can, I, can I just, can I just yeah. dovetail on that? Cause you yeah, said yeah. something, you said something really, really important. It's very important. I think to get multiple perspectives in terms of diversity and inclusion. So it's, t- it's not good to have group think. It's very important to get different perspectives from all different kinds of people, from different cultures, different races, different ethnicities, because then you broaden the world. 
you broaden the perspectives and you really enrich any idea and any thinking. So what you what you just said about perspective is is so crucial that may that actually may be the most important thing anybody can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what's interesting is because uh, you've worked with um, businesses and really, um, uh, you know, sort of the traditional corporate corporation is, you know, you're not allowed to innovate and you have to sort of, it's a, there's very, there's hierarchy. So um, what should business people know about the creative side in terms of marketing, advertising? Um, tell us more. I, I think they have to understand that you have to not, you have to kill the pedestrian ideas. <laughs> I, actually, I actually wanted to title one of my books, Kill the Pedestrian. <laughs> the publisher said, uh, actually, too many pedestrians are killed. We can't, we can't use that title. But you have to run with the, the strategically creative idea and not go with the pedestrian idea because it, it, it's not going to get you that far. And I think that Corporations have to do multiple perspective taking. They have to avoid groupthink. They have to avoid saying, well, that it worked for that company. I want one of those. And that happens in advertising all the time. So if, if um, there's a successful app that happened, sometimes the chief marketing officer will say, well, I want one of those. But that worked for them. It's not necessarily going to work for you. And that already happened. And you want something different, right? And you want to differentiate yourself and you want to you want to position yourself differently in the consumer's mind not do the same thing so there's a lot of um thinking about really what would be different how can you differentiate yourself which is what what you hear all the time but a lot of questions have to be asked a lot of uh you really have to think about context about humanistic thinking about being observant, to have about interesting solutions, about being empathetic to people, uh, and and cutting through, cutting through with beautiful, beautiful visual solutions. Yeah, I love that cutting through. Um, and uh, what what should CMOs uh, know about the creative side of branding? Well, that's really important. That any strategically creative brand has to have um, a great North Star idea that that builds your world. So if you've you know read any great novel by somebody like Murakami or even if like you think about something that I'm sure all your listeners have seen Harry Potter movies, right? They're, she built J.K. Rowling built a world. It's a, it's a believable world. Well, a great brand builds a world. And in that world, there's a voice, there's visual elements, there's um, a story, there's an origin story, and they all are in sync. So you're world building, but there's a North Star, there's a lodestar that guides all of that. And there has to be values underpinning it, right? There has to, the, a company has to walk the talk. If they have values and they have a mission, it has to be authentic. They have to really do what they're going. They have to come through on their brand promise. And yeah. they, and now Gen Z, they're not going to buy from a brand that doesn't actually do some social good. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I mentioned my uh, my nieces and nephews. They're Gen Z, and I just see like um, they they're willing to pay more for a brand because what it means to them and what it stands for. It, as opposed to the price and you know if the brand is you know doing good in the world um they're more willing to go with that brand even though it's more expensive or you know more than uh, the traditional brand so uh, exactly. yeah yeah exactly they really gen z really cares and they're activists and, yeah. and they can see through things yeah, yeah i don't want to use the bs word but they really <laughs> they really can see through it and they won't they won't put up with anything yeah. Yeah. This has been a really fascinating conversation. I see you have a new book. Um, tell the audience and listeners more about it and how can they find you and reach you and contact you and maybe even work with you. Thank you so much. I have a website, robinlanda.com. That's the best way to get me. And, and um, 
I'm on LinkedIn and I'm on Instagram and I'm on all the social media channels. And I have two new books. One just came out this past month in June called Strategic Creativity. And that's really aimed at uh, corporations, CMOs, CEOs to understand what they should get from marketing and um, branding and advertising creatives. And my new book uh, is coming out in November from Barrett Kohler, and that's called The New Art of Ideas. And that was the very first question I think you asked me about the new system for idea generation, which is the three G's, goal, gap, and gain. Yeah, well, excellent. Yeah, well, uh, it's been a great conversation for the audience and the listeners. Uh, Robin's um, resources will be in the links and the show notes check out her book. Uh, I'm actually going to go and check it out right after this. And um, it sounds so fascinating, but it's been a great conversation and um, we look forward to hearing about your future successes. Thank you so much. I'm a big fan of yours. Thank you. I'm excited that you made it for another episode. You are truly the best. If you've been following the show for a while, you know that my passion is to bring you the education you need to find your path to financial freedom. Please come back week after week for new content, new resources, and great guests. Until then, if you haven't already, please be sure to check out the website, www.drchrislewmdphd.com for more support. I'll see you next week.